Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, staff and residents of Youth Futures have had to undergo a brief questionnaire and health screening each day before stepping foot inside. Nope. Do you have a fever? Nope. Do you have shortness of breath? Nope. So we have a vigorous screening um, process at the door to screen our staff and residents for any kind of symptoms. Um, we are doing a lot of extra cleaning and sanitizing and um, you know using extra hot water on all of our laundry and dishes and all of that kind of stuff, trying to keep the house as safe as possible for everybody who comes here. Adhering to health guidelines and social distancing, the youth shelter for runaways and homeless is making sure that everyone is safe. We're only intaking kids on a case-by-case -case basis. So normally we're allowed to do some respite services. At this time, respite is being suspended. We're only serving kids who really need a place to stay. And, you know, homelessness doesn't stop just because there's a global pandemic. There are still homeless kids in our community. And so we are still taking those kids in um, and keeping them safe, offering them food and shelter. While the shelter houses 16 overnight beds and typically serves between 6 to 10 youth ages 18 and under, they are now taking in only about 4 to 5 at a time. Those kids are busy working on their schooling, um, they're searching for jobs, they're applying for stimulus money, um, and so keeping them connected online, um, connecting them to local resources so that they can continue to try to move forward and um, build a foundation that they can stand on when they leave here is really, really important. Important. And you know, I know jobs are a little bit scarce right now, um, but we're trying to help them find employment so that they can start getting back on their feet as well. While they aren't taking in teens for respite daycare during the pandemic, they are referring them. We have kids calling asking if they can intake because they're they're, they're kind of just trying to get away from their families. Um, and while that's understandable, we're not doing those types of intakes right now. So we're trying to support those families by either referring them to other services, such as the SMART team. Um, we're offering family therapy, uh, either over Zoom or occasionally in person, depending on the circumstances, um, and trying to support those students in keeping them home. If kids have run away or been kicked out, if they don't have a safe place to go, this is the place to come. We want them to come here first. We want to intake them or get them into family therapy, reconnect them with their families if that's safe and possible. Um, you know, report to the appropriate agencies if, if there's more serious problems going on. Um, definitely we don't, it's never a good time to sleep on the street, but during a pandemic it's just particularly bad. Relying on local food programs and storage houses, Youth Futures is currently struggling to stay afloat as donations are down during the pandemic. A lot of our funding sources during this time have been frozen or have dried up completely. Um, and just our, our community donations have, have all but dried up entirely. Um, we used to have people who would stop by and, you know, donate, you know, five, ten, twenty dollars here and there. Occasionally we'd get larger donations. Um, and that's really stopped. And so having that community support has really made an impact on how we operate. We've really had to tighten the belt, um, reduce our spending, reduce the amount of activities that we offer to kids, um, you know, not get quite as creative and elaborate with our meals, but go really, really, really basic. So Whipple said they are also in need of cash donations and cleaning supplies. So if anybody has, you know, an extra supply of those hard to find things like sanitizing wipes and um, cleaning supplies, um, paper products in particular, we're very low on things like paper towels and toilet paper, um, masks and gloves, that sort of thing. Non-perishable food, at this time we cannot accept prepared food, um, but we can accept the non-perishable stuff. So we really um, need support from the community to keep our pantry stock so that we can continue to feed not only our residents, but also so, um, those community members that we that we are distributing supplies to. Whipple said anyone interested in helping with this cause can donate online anytime. The most effective way to help us is to donate cash. Um, that's going to be just the safest, uh, most impactful way to help us at this time. So you can go to youthfuturesutah.org and donate money to us there. And um, that money stays right here in our community. It helps local youth. It helps keep our doors open and our programs running. In St. George, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.